DMEC is not a common treatment for a pseudomonal corneal ulcer, but I'd like to share with you this video explaining why we performed this operation for this patient. This was a patient who presented to us with a fulminant contact lens related pseudomonal ulcer, which was finally subdued after months of topical fortified antibiotics, leaving her with a no longer infected but nevertheless destroyed eye. She had anterior corneal haze, but more significantly, she had endothelial collapse and a retrocorneal membrane which was spread across the back of the cornea. She also had posterior synechia, she had a white cataract, and when we were evaluating her for possible therapeutic remedies, we contemplated a penetrating keratoplasty, which would make sense. She had anterior corneal scarring, she had an infection from the front of the cornea, which propagated through the back, she had a deranged anterior segment, a PK would make sense. But the point of this video is that PK is almost always the wrong answer, and you'd be shocked what you can do to rehabilitate an otherwise extremely sick eye. This is sort of the next installment in our DMEC or blind DMEC series, DMEC with extremely poor visibility. So here is this patient. She's sitting here in the operating room in our office. We have an office-based operating environment. So this is a topical anesthesia that we're supplementing with some subtenons lidocaine. You can look at the cornea and see that she has prodigious scarring with anterior haze and she's got pigment deposited in the epithelium and she's got this retro retrocorneal membrane which is most noticeable inferiorly where it is so thick that it obscures all of the details of her anterior chamber. We're doing a decimeterexis under air because that enhances my visibility to the greatest extent. So this is an inverted Sinsky hook. I'm scoring and then stripping through these paracentesis and removing this wad of retrocorneal membrane through the main wound. I'm stripping off this anterior corneal fibrosis. I've debrided the epithelium to help my visualization, and I've also removed this anterior layer of scar tissue so far as I can see. I'm making a little inferior iridotomy, and now I'm injecting the DMEC graft, and this component of the video is unedited. I'm injecting a large graft. This is a nine millimeter graft, and after I've injected it there through the main wound, I'm gonna deepen the chamber with a little bit of balanced salt solution. Now I have to check the orientation. It's a long cannula that I'm using to verify the Motsuro sign to see if the graft is right side up. It's not, it's upside down, so now I have to flip the graft in the eye. So here I'm checking the Motsuro sign, it's negative. That means the graft is upside down. So I depress the wound, I inject through the paracentesis, I recheck, now the graft is right side up. So it's a positive Motsuro sign. That means I can unfold the graft. You'll notice here, despite the horrific visualization, still it's possible to determine orientation, not with an S stamp, but by checking the Motsuro sign, the curl of the graft, that tells you whether the graft is right side up or not. So even here with this terrible visualization, you'll see now the graft is totally unfolded in the anterior chamber and we're ready to lift it up to the back surface of the cornea atop an air bubble. And here we go, I'm putting an air bubble underneath the graft through the main wound and I'm gonna lift this transplant up to the back surface of the cornea and this is what it looks like at the conclusion of the case. So you may say, well, who cares if DMEC is technically possible in this eye? Still, there's gonna be significant anterior corneal scarring. This patient is gonna have massive visual limitations after this surgery. DMEC is not the right strategy, but let me show you the follow-up to this case. This operation was performed in October of 2023. Five months later, in March of 2024, just a couple of weeks ago, we operate on this eye a second time. And this second surgery is to address the patient's white cataract that developed during her pseudomonal episode. And you can see, here's the same patient on the operating room table back in our office, our office-based setup, and I'm making our incisions here now. You'll notice that there still is significant corneal scarring, but the eye is white and quiet it looks much more normal. And that scarring, although present centrally, is much less significant than it was in that previous video. You'll notice the retrocorneal membrane is gone. Look inferiorly, look how clear the cornea is. Now what I'm doing is I'm releasing these fibrotic adhesions between the 
pupil and the patient's anterior lens capsule. I'm stripping them off and I'm going to dilate this little meiotic pupil with a Malugan ring. This is not easy to see what I'm doing. I'm doing this a little bit just by feel, but we'll put the Malugan ring into the eye and then we're going to paint the anterior lens capsule with some more tripan blue. Normally, I don't use a painting technique. I just squirt the tripan blue in the eye. But in this particular instance, I'm painting the anterior lens capsule because I really want to try to avoid staining the back of the cornea with tripan blue. You know, this is an abnormal cornea even still. And so we'd like to direct the tripan blue down against the lens capsule and not up against the back surface of the cornea. And now I'm going to remove the excess because we really want to try to promote visualization to the greatest extent. So this is an irrigation aspiration handpiece just to aspirate whatever little lingering bits of uh, tripan blue stain viscoelastic are in the eye. I'll replenish the viscoelastic. I'll change the view to coaxial. And here I am with the capsular rexus forcep trying to delicately peel my way around to form a continuous curvilinear capsular rexus. And this is surprisingly possible. My view is still poor. And so I'm going to pre-chop the lens because that can be done one-handed by feel without really needing to get a great impression of where the lens is with a bimanual technique. So with one hand you can crack the lens. Here I am removing it in bits. I'm removing the second to last and then subsequently the last piece of this patient's nucleus. And once this lens comes out, you'll sort of see where we are from the standpoint of the optics of the eye. How clear is this cornea going to be? What will this patient's vision be able to achieve through this cornea, which we've previously rehabilitated? So here comes the last piece of the nucleus, and now we're injecting the IOL into the capsular bag. This is my preferred standard lens. It's a three-piece silicone lens, just because I think the optics are so nice. And there it is. Here's the lens in the eye at the end of the case. And to look at this eye, compared to what it looked like before the DMEC, it is just shocking because yes, there is some anterior corneal fibrosis. Yes, there is some scarring and some vascularization of the cornea. But this is an eye that can see. This is a cornea that is much clearer than it used to be and a patient who does not have to go through with a penetrating keratoplasty. This is a patient that's going to have acceptable quality vision with a minimum of long-term lifetime obligations. You know, a patient who gets a horrific pseudomonal corneal ulcer is often a patient who's not going to do well with a penetrating graft, that has this big steroid burden for the rest of their life, that has stitches, that has irregular astigmatism, that may need to wear a contact lens again with another risk of more infection in the future. It is so nice to be able to substantially rehabilitate the vision of the eye without committing a patient to a penetrating graft. So the reason I show this video is to impress upon you that even an eye that has an insult primarily to the anterior cornea. Even those eyes can be often best treated with a DMEC as opposed to with a full thickness penetrating graft. So what I would recommend if you're contemplating doing a PK and you think that, well, at least some component of the patient's preoperative problem is endothelial dysfunction, you may start there. Start with a DMEC and see where you end up because you might be shocked how good the vision can be and how nice the eye can look without recourse to a PK.